Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Winecast. I'm in the middle of a busy week and just have time for a short cast on a single grape varietal. It may be brief, but that's not for lack of complexity on the part of the grape. In fact, the grape for this cast may be one of the most interesting and complex grapes in the wine world, Chenin Blanc. Though Chenin is an important grape, it doesn't get quite the play and attention that some varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay do. This attention deficit isn't just about plantings and press, it's also about research, genetic and otherwise. So unlike Cab Sauv and Chard, whose origins and relationships are pretty well understood, those of Chenin Blanc are still a little more conjectural. Chenin Blanc is probably native to the Loire Valley of France and may have originated there around the 10th century AD. What genetic information there is on the grape shows that there is a parent-child relationship between it and another white grape, Sauvignon, that you might remember from my cast on the Jura, which is where Sauvignon is best known today. It's most likely that Sauvignon is the parent and that Chenin Blanc is the child. As of 2010, Chenin Blanc is the 26th most planted varietal in the world, and that's down from the previous two decades where it stood at 22nd in 2000 and 19th in 1990. The country with the largest acreage under vine of Chenin is South Africa, where the grape makes up about 20% of all plantings in the country, pretty epic number by any reckoning, and more than half again as large as the second place grape, Cabernet Sauvignon. Though you'll see varietal bottlings from South Africa labeled as Chenin Blanc, especially for the export market, the grape is more commonly known by a local name that looks to English speakers like it should be pronounced Steen, but, as I was told recently by an Afrikaans speaker, actually should be pronounced Stain, as in that thing that you got on your shirt from swirling your wine too aggressively, and that, fun fact, just means stone. South Africa is followed by France with most plantings in the Loire Valley and totaling around half of the acreage in South Africa. Though much smaller in size than either South Africa or France, there are important plantings in the United States, Argentina, and Australia. Size of plantings alone isn't the only metric for judging this grape's importance, though, and Chenin Blanc's phenomenal vigor or ability to produce large yields has made it a highly planted grape in emerging wine regions, particularly in hot climates, where it can be grown in large quantities that suffer in terms of complexity but can be made into easy-drinking bulk wine that can be an important source of revenue for new producers in these regions. In Thailand, for instance, it makes up 12% of acres under vine, and in Mexico, 7%. As we'll discuss further in a moment, though, it's important to keep in mind that countries that have a longer history with this grape, like the top five that we just mentioned, aren't immune from producing lackluster bulk Chenin either. Chenin Blanc produces juice that's high in both acid and sugar, a fact that makes it very, very versatile, and producers have taken advantage of this versatility to craft whites from it that are bone dry, slightly to moderately sweet, or just straight up lusciously sweet and concentrated. Chenin also features in sparkling wine production, a style that benefits from Chenin's searing acidity. Our grape is also famously sensitive to its terroir, especially in the fullest sense of that word that includes the climate that it's grown in, and it's important when planning to craft a quality Chenin that the grape be allowed to ripen fully, or the resulting wine will be bland and uninteresting and not express the full range of complex aromatics and flavors for which Chenin is justly famous. And what are those aromatics and flavors? Well, they will vary depending on the factors just outlined, but some descriptors that pop up again and again are quince, green plum, and honey, all supported by an intense core of mineral and herbal notes, with one herb in particular, angelica, an herb responsible for some of the flavors in gin, absinthe, and various aromatic liqueurs, often popping up in tasting notes. If the grapes were affected by botrytis, something particularly common in dessert styles, then the honey will be more pronounced and additional notes of beeswax and dried mushroom may be present. In the best examples, all of this will be supported by terrific acid that makes the best Chenins very ageable, and aging a good Chenin can lead to development of a fascinating suite of complex flavors and aromas in the bottle. Sugar, like acid, also helps make a wine age-worthy, and the best sweet Chenins, particularly botrytized examples from the Middle Loire, are famous for their ageability and their development in the bottle. Speaking of famous examples, which one should you try? Well, South Africa is a good place to start. 
As with most New World regions where things like crop yields and growing sites aren't regulated, do some research first and look for producers that have a solid reputation for quality to avoid Shenan that was overcropped and made in a style that emphasized quantity over quality. And also, be aware that many South African Shenans are made to be drunk young, and while they won't suffer from a bit of careful aging, they won't necessarily benefit from it either. You will find age-worthy Shenans in South Africa, just be sure to do some checking first if that's what you're looking for. Your next stop should be in the Loire Valley, where you can try wine from Vouvray that will feature 100% Shenan made across the sweetness spectrum with most wines from this region having at least a touch of sugar while whites from Chinon will be solidly dry examples of Chenin. But when it comes to dry Chenin, the place to go is Sauvignere, a remarkable appellation famed for producing Chenin Blanc that is usually dry and remarkably interesting in terms of its complexity and ability to evolve over time. And you shouldn't leave the Loire without trying a wine from one or more of the seven appellations in the western part of the Middle Loire that huddle around the Léon River that increases the humidity of the climate in the vineyards that grow there and promotes the development of botrytis, resulting in deeply sweet wines affected by that fungus. For more information on these seven regions, as well as on Vouvray, Chinon, Sauvignère, and other regions in the Loire that use Chenin, check out my casts on the Loire Valley, especially the second cast on the Middle Loire. Finally, it never hurts to be on the lookout for Chenin from other regions, especially the U.S., Argentina, and Australia. But just be aware that a lot of Chenin in these and other countries ends up as a fairly uninteresting and unexciting wine, so research is key here, and you should be looking for smaller, quality-minded, or boutique producers that are interested in carefully crafting a wine from this grape in a way that allows it to express its full range of flavors, aromas, and other characteristics. Thanks for joining me for another wine cast. If this cast was helpful or enjoyable, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks to everyone who's taken the time to leave a comment or a question for me. I'm really grateful for all of my subscribers here and for my followers on Instagram at Unknown Winecaster Drinks Wine, and I'd love to connect with you on that platform as well as this one. I'm your host, the Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly. <laughs>